Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering Dynamical Systems and Control Theory Tutorials. Generally speaking, in these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, signal processing, and machine learning. In this tutorial we explain one very important issue that might arise when using the linearization approach to analyze the stability or design controllers for nonlinear systems. Namely, we will show that if a person is not familiar with Lyapunov's first method theorem, then he or she might come to completely wrong conclusion when analyzing nonlinear systems by using the linearization method. Namely, one can come to the conclusion that the nonlinear system is marginally stable when in fact it's completely unstable and this can lead to devastating effects when designing a control algorithm. But before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 350 free video tutorials that you can find on this YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Also, please feel free to leave any comment or a question you might have in the comment section below this video tutorial. This slide gives a brief summary of what you will learn in this video tutorial. Later on, we will derive equations and mathematically explain the presented graphs. Over here, we have a nonlinear state space model with its phase portrayed and a state trajectory represented by this red line. The state trajectory starts from some initial condition over here and it evolves like this. Obviously, the zero equilibrium point of this nonlinear system is not stable. After linearizing the state space model around the equilibrium point 0, 0, we obtain the linearized state space model given by these two equations. Here is the phase portrait of the linearized system, and here is the state trajectory. We start from this initial state, and here is how the state trajectory looks like. Obviously, the equilibrium point of this system is marginally stable. The state trajectories are actually closed circles. What is the importance of this example? Namely, from this example, we can see that if we only analyze the stability of the linearized model, we will come to the conclusion that the original nonlinear system is also marginally stable, when in fact the nonlinear system is unstable. That is, we will make a completely wrong conclusion. This is a pitfall of using the linearization procedure. Here we made an error due to the fact that we are not familiar with the Lyapunov's first method theorem that tells us when we can analyze the stability of nonlinear systems by using the linearization approach. A lot of people will make the following error that might have a devastating effect on the control system design. Namely, they will simply linearize the nonlinear system to obtain the linearized state space model and then they will use a linear system theory to design a controller for the linear model. They will think that the system is stabilized and that it can track the desired reference signal. However, in practice, when they implement such an algorithm and when they start controlling the original nonlinear system, the complete feedback control algorithm and the system might become completely unstable. First, let us explain when and under which conditions we can analyze the stability of nonlinear systems by using the linearization approach. Let us consider a nonlinear system represented by the equation 1. Over here, x is the state variable, and f is a nonlinear function that is represented like this. Over here, fi, where i goes from 1 to until n, that is, these entries are scalar nonlinear functions of the vector argument x. Let x star be an equilibrium point around which we linearize our original nonlinear system. 
And let the linearized matrix A be defined like this. That is, we compute the Jacobian matrix and we evaluate the Jacobian matrix at the equilibrium point. Here's how the Jacobian matrix of the partial derivative looks like. We take F1 and the first row consists of partial derivatives of F1 with respect to X1, X2 and Xn. Similarly, the second row is the row of partial derivatives of F2 with respect to X1, X2 and Xn. And the final row is basically consisting of partial derivatives of fn with respect to x1, x2, and xn. The linearized system is given by the equation number 5. Over here, z is the relative state space variable defined with respect to the equilibrium point x star. That is, z is defined like this. The relative state space variable z is simply a difference between the absolute state and the linearization point. This theorem is one of the most important results in the linear systems theory. It is the local stability theorem. Let us consider the nonlinear system given by this equation, x dot is equal to f of x, and let us linearize this system around the equilibrium point x star. As the result, we will obtain the system z dot is equal to a z where z is the relative state space variable, that is, z is x minus x star. If all the eigenvalues of the matrix A have strictly negative real parts, then the equilibrium point x star is asymptotically stable. Again, if all the eigenvalues of our linearized system have strictly negative real parts, then the equilibrium point x star is asymptotically stable. Number two, if at least one of the eigenvalues of A has a positive real part, then the equilibrium point x star is unstable. And here is the third point of this very important theorem. If one or more eigenvalues of the linearized system have zero real parts and no eigenvalues with positive real parts, then we cannot conclude anything about the stability of the equilibrium point x star by using the linearization approach. Again, if one or more eigenvalues of A have zero real parts and no eigenvalues with positive real parts, then we cannot conclude anything about the stability of the equilibrium point x star by using the linearization approach. And this is the, precisely the case that we had at the beginning of this video tutorial. This theorem clearly tells us that we cannot analyze the stability of the original nonlinear system by using the linearization approach. This is because the eigenvalues of this system, as you will see later on, are on the imaginary axis. And consequently, according to our theorem, we cannot conclude anything about the stability of the equilibrium point of the nonlinear system by using the linearization approach. Dot. Next, let us illustrate the application of this theorem on our original example. Here is our original state space model and the point defined by x1 star is 0 and x2 star is 0 is the equilibrium point of this system. To see this, we can see that this point is the solution of this equation, that is, we set x1 dot to 0 and x2 dot to 0 over here, and we obtain these two equations, and we can see that 0, 0 is the solution of this equation. Next, we need to linearize the system around this equilibrium point. To do that, we need to rec recognize the following. So this is our F1, here it is, and this is F2, here it is. Next, we need to compute the matrix A. The matrix A is given by this equation. We simply compute the partial derivative, partial derivative of F1 with respect to X1, partial derivative of F1 with respect to X2, partial derivative of f2 with respect to x1, and partial derivative of f2 with respect to x2. 
and we obtain this matrix. Next, we evaluate this matrix at the equilibrium point 0, 0. And as the result, we obtain this matrix. Next, we need to determine the eigenvalues of our matrix A. The eigenvalues are zeros of the characteristic polynomial. The characteristic polynomial is given by this equation, and by substituting the values of A in this equation, we obtain this determinant, and by evaluating this determinant, we obtain S squared plus 1. Consequently, the eigenvalues are given by this equation. S squared plus 1 is equal to 0. We have two solutions. S1 is minus J and S2 is J. That is, the eigenvalues are on the imaginary axis. 1 is over here, J, and 1 is over here at minus J. This is a very important analysis and result. Now, someone who does not know control system theory will immediately conclude that since the linear system is stable, or better to say marginally stable, but not asymptotically stable, nonlinear system will also be stable. That is marginally stable. Well, this is a completely wrong conclusion. Let us show that. To show that, we need to introduce polar coordinates. Since our system will have a much simpler de description in the polar coordinates. Here are the polar coordinates. And what do we do over here? We simply say that x1, right, is rho cos sinus theta. And rho and theta are new polar coordinates. And similarly, x2 is rho sinus theta. Our next task is to represent the system dynamics in the polar coordinates. To do that, from this simple equation and by substituting the polar coordinates, we obtain this equation. That is, rho squared is x1 squared plus x2 squared. Now, by differentiating this equation, we obtain the time derivative of rho squared is 2 rho rho dot. The time derivative of the right-hand side is 2x1 x1 dot plus 2x2 x2 dot and from this equation we finally obtain this equation. Finally, let us substitute this equation in our system dynamics. Where is our system dynamics? The system dynamics is given by this equation number 7. This is our nonlinear system and as the result we obtain this equation. Now by substitute, substituting 15 and 17 in 16, that is by substituting this equation and this equation in this equation, and after several algebraic manipulations, that is, we are doing this, then we are doing this, and finally we are doing this, and look what we obtained. We obtained that rho dot is equal to rho to the power of 3. That is, the first state equation in the polar coordinates is very simple, and it takes this form. To derive the second equation for theta dot, we can start from this expression. Basically, we can divide x2 by x1, and as the result, we obtain sinus theta over cos sinus theta, and that's tan theta. From the last equation, we can obtain that theta is arc tan of x2 over x1. We know that the derivative of arc tan function is given by this equation, where z is some new variable. By using this expression and by taking the first derivative of this equation with respect to time, we obtain this equation. Now, by substituting the system dynamic 7, that is, by substituting our nonlinear model in this equation, we finally obtain that theta dot is equal to 1. Consequently, the state space model in the polar coordinates takes the simple form. Rho dot is rho to the power 3 and theta dot is 1. Now, since rho dot is always positive for positive rho, and rho is by definition always positive, we conclude that the nonlinear system is unstable. However, the linearized model is marginally stable, and we saw that from this equation. That is, we've seen the eigenvalues of the linearized model and they're on the imaginary axis. 
So there is a contradiction over here. And this example clearly shows that there are a lot of pitfalls of not properly understanding when we can perform the stability analysis that's based on linearization. And our Lyapunov first meta theorem clarifies this case and it clearly tells us that we cannot analyze the stability if we come to the conclusion that the eigenvalues of the linearized A matrix are on, on the imaginary axis. Next, let us plot and compare the phase portraits of linearized and nonlinearized and nonlinear models. To plot the phase portrait, I'm using the Python code posted over here. You can go to my GitHub page and you can see the Python code for plotting the phase portrait. I will provide a link to my GitHub page in the description below this video. Here is the phase portrait of our original nonlinear system. The state trajectory starts from here and it evolves like this. We can clearly see that the system is unstable. Or better to say, and more precisely to say, that its equilibrium point is unstable. On the other hand, let's look into the phase portrait of the linearized matrix A and the linear model. And here it is. Here's our initial state, and here's the state trajectory after maybe five seconds. We can see that this system is marginally stable. So, we prove the contradiction. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.